Hello, Bees Bladers, and welcome newcomers. You have found a channel to add to your list for weekly knife content. I do unboxings, detailed overviews, knife reviews, and after carry and use. So a huge thank you to all my subscribers. Don't forget that that bell button has options to select all so you don't miss a video or a giveaway. And there is a giveaway coming up very soon. We're about to hit that 500 mark. <laughs> So I've carried and used the Insight quite a bit the last couple of months, and we'll go over my experience with it. A couple fit, specs, ergos, and uh, you guys can get your own opinion and see what you think. And please support the channel by joining me on Patreon to help with knife content that we that we share together. It gives for uh, more giveaways to help with postage, and I'm hoping behind the scenes videos uh, on Patreon. I'm probably going to put one on Patreon this week. So uh, you might want to check, check the link in the description if you want to check that out and support the channel. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Bees Blades. That's an easy way to contact me if you're not a patron. And you can also email me and my mailing address. All of that stuff is down in the description. It always will be. So let's take a good look at this knife. And I'll run over it real close so you can see what it looks like. And then we'll get up close one more time and I'll go over uh, all the little details and... I'll let you know what I think about it. So there is the show side. And going backwards. Isn't that a good looking knife? It's pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. Would you look at it? Would you just look at it? Now I will put my measurements in the description. I've, these are all my measurements, not what you see on different websites. So I'll run through them real quick for you. So you know what you're looking at. This is not a little knife. Comes in at 4.595, so 4.6 ounces. It's not super light, but you get a lot of knife for uh, for the whole package. So your blade length on this bad boy is 3.66 inches. Your sharpened length is 3.38. Hope the birds aren't too loud for you. Your blade height is 1.19 inches. Your blade stock is nice and thin. It's uh, 0.118. So that's really nice. Uh, behind the edge on this, I measured is 0.12, which is very impressive for such a larger size knife, right? Um, your overall length is 8.46 inches. Your closed length, 4.76 from here to here. And your blade material is D2. Uh, they claim that the hardness is 59 to 61 HRC. Well, I don't do that kind of testing. I'm not that big time. Um, your blade style is drop point blade. has a nice nice long flat grind it's not quite a complete flat grind but boy it's pretty pretty close it's right up all the way to that swedge up here so that's very nice you got a satin finish on your blade and this uh red and black here it's layered g10 and carbon fiber um man i really really like the looks of this so you got a liner lock in here and that's stainless steel we'll go over the specs of that here in just a minute and inside you have caged ball bearings in the pivot, making it nice and nice and smooth. And you have a deep carry stainless steel tip up right side only carry. So no lefty love for you southpaws out there. And this is made in China. So let's do some comparisons, fit, finish, ergos, and, and I'll give you my opinions. See how wide she looks next to a couple knives. Uh, some common knives out there. This is the uh, Spyderco Tenacious and putting them level it is it is wider than the Tenacious and here is the button lock Elementum definitely a wider profile than that uh, what's another one here's a knife a lot of you guys might have this is the Pilar 3 and I'm putting these right up against each other so the Pilar is definitely a lot thinner um, this does have a nice nice thicker contoured handle and it is so comfortable alright so I'm gonna put this up against some other knives. Now, one knife that this really compares with, and the blade is so similar, is the Praxis. And I'm, I'll put a picture up here because I do not have the Praxis with me. But let's throw a couple up here that you guys may have to give you an idea of what we're working with. Here is Spyderco Manix 2. And I'm going to keep them moving along just so you can get an idea of the size of this knife if you happen to have one of these I pop up. Here's the Spyderco Pair 3. So you can see this is a big boy knife. And I love it. Love the size of this knife. Here's the Elemental Button Lock. Another Civivi. 
And here's the Civivi Riffle. So the Riffle, the blade is, it has actually more, just a hair, more sharpened length. So you're getting about the same there. And I don't know, I would say that the blade stock thickness is about the same with the Riffle. And that is a slicing machine that gives you indication of what we're looking at here. A um, couple more. Here's the Civivi Brazen. So you can see it's bigger than the Brazen. There's a top view. Get a little more handle width. Now here's a knife I'm going to be doing a review here shortly. It is the CJRB Centros. And it has a, it has more cutting edge. has a, a smaller handle. But there's the Centros. And here's a really common one. There's the CRKT Pilar 3. So there's, there's uh, some idea for size reference for you. So if you're still watching and you enjoy knife content at least twice a week, um, give this video a thumbs up. Smash the subscribe button. Crush that bell button if you haven't already so you get notified of new content. Liking the video, how long you watch it, and being a part of the conversation in the comments lets the YouTube algorithm, it lets it know other knife lovers may actually want to watch this and check out the channel. That's the only way that people can find it. So I saved the groveling and only asked once per video, so please subscribe now and before you forget. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, blade play. There's no blade play, no lock rock. Um, it is uh, super, super sturdy. Um, it has a really nice and smooth swedge. The, blades, the blade uh, has a really nice finish. And I've used this knife a lot. I really like the scales. There's absolutely no sharp spots or hot spots on my knife at all. And usually I can find one. This deep carry pocket clip, I'm guessing because it has a little larger handle, doesn't hit me at all. I mean, it, it's so nice. The blade, let's see how, I just uh, disassembled this yesterday and cleaned it. Blade centers up just right. And it was not hard to center whatsoever. The aesthetics on this knife, they're very nice. And you do have a, an option for a lanyard right here. And it's recessed, so you don't have that messing up with your aesthetics. That's very nice. Very, very nice. Um, the pocket clip, which is uh, recessed, doesn't take up a lot of real estate inside your pocket liner. And I'll put a picture right here of what it looks like in the pocket. And... You get a recessed pocket clip. I, yeah, that's really nice. I, I mean, I like that. The deep carry clip doesn't give me any issues at all. It fits nice in the pocket. So my grip, my hand is three and three quarter inches from here to here. So I, I have a definitely a large glove size and I it is a perfect, perfect grip. I mean, what are we looking here? For the jimping, now if I had to say, eh, give me a little more jimping, just a just a couple more for when I'm when I'm gripping the knife. Um, I just wish there was a couple more, but that's a that's a minor nitpick. You can choke up. It's got a really nice uh, forward choil. That is really nice. Um, this you know for doing downward cuts. You know the uh, this, the jimping right here is perfect for doing downward downward cuts for pull cuts. I wouldn't mind. I usually tend to push my thumb up. I wouldn't mind a little bit more here on top of the spine. But like I said, that's that's a minor issue. The uh, liner lockup is around 40 to 45 percent. Can you see? Can you see it? I'd say around 40, 45 percent. There's no lock stick. It's really nice and clean. Your liners are milled out very nicely. Uh, to, you know, I imagine before they milled out these liners that they had considerably more weight going on. So that's a good thing. Your opening options, you pretty much. You can, you can slow roll it and grab it with your the thumb and pull it out like that. And then you've got a very nice action. You don't need any, any kind of, of this business. All you got to do is just barely, the detent is just tuned perfectly for a flipper tab. You know, and me, I always like extra options, but I'm learning that there's reasons why you might not want them. For instance, if you had a thumb stud on this knife to clear the finger guard right here, your thumb stud would have to be out this far. And if it was out this far, then you'd be right in your cutting path and you'd be hitting hitting it and when sharpening too. So I'm perfectly fine with this knife having just the option of that deployment. So that's not too bad. Now cutting through hardened leather, it proved to be pretty easy. The edge geometry on this thing is really nice. And as far as acoustics go, the action and scales are good. Um, it doesn't have that 
cheap sound. It's really solid. You know, you've got those nice hefty liners inside, and those liners are so smooth. Like I said before, I have no hot spots on this. The only sharp parts of this knife are the point and the edge, and that's what it's supposed to be, right? Right. But as far as your acoustics, here's a little sound check for you. Nice and clean. And as far as drop shuttiness, it's pretty drop shutty. I can't really do a side view for you, but you get the idea. Maybe next time I'll start moving my camera up, but when it's straight up and down for use, it just drops right in. Like it is, it is so perfect. So overall, I completely recommend this knife. If you're looking for a full size everyday carry that's lightweight for its size, I mean, for such a big knife, it's lightweight. What'd we say, about four and a half or so? Um, has nice ergos, fits very nicely in the hand. It's solid. It does not feel cheap whatsoever. Um, has good contouring. Um, and also, let's see, as far as the price, um, it was around 70 bucks and it's still up right now on most of the sites. Um, there's plenty of options. There's different options, different colors, and there's also different blade and different scales you can get. So you're going to look at between 70 up to around $88 for the carbon fiber in Damascus. But this is a nice knife. I've been cutting a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff with this knife, working around the house, doing projects. I like it because, I mean, I can get in there and use it. It's a good user knife, and it's also a very attractive knife. So tell me what you think about it. If you have any questions on anything else or this knife, um, put some comments down there. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate all of you. Have a great rest of your day. Be careful, and don't cut yourself.